Hi everybody, I'm Susan Mulvihill. Welcome back to our garden. Well, it's a beautiful fall day, but the temperatures are getting colder and there are a lot of things I have on my to-do list that need to be done soon. So today you get to follow me along and hopefully there will be things that will jog your memory as to what you need to be doing in your garden as well. I'm standing out in our front yard next to our big flower bed. And there's a mixture of annuals and perennials in here. There's bulbs, there's herbaceous peonies. I've got all kinds of things in here. And the thing is that in the fall, there's a very important step that I need to do. And this might apply to some of you watching. We have a problem when there's a good snow cover on the ground because we end up with gophers and voles, that's voles with a V, underneath the snow where they're protected from predators. And the gophers will chew on the roots of the plants, which of course will kill them. And the voles will chew at the base of the stems right at the ground level, and it will kill a plant very easily. Well, what I want to do is to prevent that from happening by sprinkling a repellent on the soil surface. And I've got one here. This brand is called Repelzol. There's also one called Mole Chaser, and it actually works for voles really well. The active ingredient is castor oil, and it's on these granules. So I really need to sprinkle this on the surface of the bed to protect the plants through the winter months. Now you might be looking at this bed saying, well, gosh, she's got all these plants here. She needs to cut those down to the ground so she can sprinkle the repellent. Actually, I don't cut plants down in the fall. And that's because all of the seed heads on the different types of plants will provide seeds for the birds during the winter months. So, I have enough openings between the plants to sprinkle the repellent on the soil surface, and so I'm still going to be protecting them and also feeding the birds in the winter. Now there are two big types of critters that I really want to keep out of the fenced part of our yard and that would be deer and moose. Yes, we get both of them. And I told you how part of our yard is fenced to keep them out. If you look closely, the best you can, you'll see that our orchard has a seven and a half foot tall fence around it with deer netting at the top. And then as I pan around here, our water garden is behind those shrubs. And then sorry about the bright sun. And then I'm going back to where our backyard is. And the immediate part of our backyard also has a deer fence. But we have two arbor gates, and those are the chink in the armor, so to speak. So this is one of our arbor gates, and it's called that because in addition to this gate here, it also has an arbor at the entrance to our water garden room. And so it's a lovely addition to our landscape. But the problem is with this big opening here, deer will jump through and moose will probably just push their way through. That's just how they are. And what I do during the spring and summer months is I have wind chimes and they're hanging fairly lowly. And what will happen is if these get bumped, they make noise and deer don't really want anything to do with wind chimes, especially if they're blowing in the wind. But during the fall and winter months, deer and moose are more stressed and they're willing to take chances. So I came up with a method for keeping them out of this area, and protecting our garden, and I wanted to show that to you. So here is my invention, and I have to be honest and tell you that Bill is the mechanical genius in our family, but I figured this out all by myself. And it's looking a little rumply, and that's just because it's been rolled up since last winter when we took it off of the gates, and it will straighten out just fine. 
But here's the idea behind it. I took some plastic deer netting, and I'll put the names of some online suppliers on the screen for you. And I made sure it was the width of the arbor. And then I attached it using zip ties to some electrical metal conduit. It was just spare stuff we had laying around so we didn't have to spend any money. And so there's a conduit at the top and one at the bottom. And this slips into the opening and creates a physical barrier to keep the deer and the moose out. It is just so slick. So let me show you how it goes into place. And maybe this will give you an idea for keeping deer out of an area of your yard that maybe isn't as well protected as it could be for the fall and winter. I decided it was better to do it first and then I'll explain what I did because it was a little bit too much to wrestle. So what I have here on the arbor is there's a bar that comes at this height, which is plenty. There is no deer or moose that's going to be able to get through that opening. And so it rests on there. And then this lower part of the arbor has these vertical bars. And so what I did is at the very back vertical bar, I put the lower conduit in there so it can't move out of the way at all. So physical barrier, I'm keeping the wind chimes here just as something that will make some noise. And this works really, really well. So if I pan on the gate, you can see where I've put the different components of my blocker. How cool is that? So I just put the barrier in the other arbor gate that we have that goes right into our backyard. And you know, it's so hard to get pictures this time of year because there's such long shadows over everything, but you might be able to see the grid a little bit better. And I've got it locked within the structure of the arbor. Here's another important thing I need to do. We have this really cool rain gauge that we got from Gardener's Supply a few years ago. And this beaker is made of glass. So if there's water in here and we start getting a lot of freezing and thawing temperatures, this is going to break. Ask me how I know this. <laughs> I bought some extras because I learned the hard way. Don't forget to bring glass types of garden ornaments indoors for the winter. Here's another thing I need to do. Terracotta ornaments will not make it through our winters here in zone 5B. So I need to take them down and put them indoors. Now here's something I don't have to do today or any time this fall, and that is to clean up the leaves within our perennial beds around our shrubs and trees. That's because the leaves provide important habitat for different types of beneficial insects to overwinter in. So you don't have to have a super tidy garden at the end of the growing season. Leave the leaves in place for those bugs that do so much for you in the garden. While I'm in the veggie garden, I thought you might like to see how our small winter garden is doing in our hoop house. You can see that I've temporarily got some floating row cover partially over the hoops. And I'm mainly doing that because right now I'm leaving the doors of the hoop house open and I don't want the quail to come in and see the plants and eat them because that would not be good. So now you can see what's going on in here. 
In this first row up to this point is Bower lettuce. This is my first year of growing this new variety and it is fabulous. I heartily recommend it. And then this row here is Butter Crunch lettuce. And of course, I just picked a whole bunch of lettuce yesterday, so you can't really see how big the plants were, but I use the cut and come again method where you just take a few leaves off and that allows the plant to develop more leaves that you can harvest. And then I have a few kale plants over here. This plant and a few others in the bed behind me are a type of Batavia lettuce and those are really good too. Bill is planning to blow out all of the sprinkle lines all over our landscape, including the raised bed system here in our garden. So it's my duty to undo all of these from the valve and then when he starts blowing them out what he'll do is open up all of the lines so that he can blow all the water out of them and that way they won't freeze during the winter. Now as you can see there isn't much left growing in our garden. We've got the grow bags of potatoes that need to be harvested next week I've got a bed of carrots and parsnips, and I'm waiting for them to get frosted nicely because that makes their roots even sweeter. And then I also have way back there, the beets. And so those need to be harvested. So that is the plan for next week. But before I go today, I wanted to show you how we store our root crops because it might be a little bit unusual, but it has been extremely successful for us and very simple. I wanted to show you this method today just in case you're ready to harvest your root crops now. So we use Rubbermaid type bins that have a lid and we take straw and pre-moisten it in water for a few days and then we put a light layer of it in the bottom of the container. We put a layer of carrots, parsnips, potatoes, whatever, another layer of straw more root crops, another layer, and so on until the bin is full or you run out of root crops. And then we don't snap the lid on because you want good air circulation. We just kind of put it a little bit to the side like this and that way things aren't going to fall in but they're getting that air circulation in there. We have found this method works incredibly well, especially with potatoes. They always used to get so rubbery and we switched to this method through some experimentation and what a game changer. So I hope this is helpful. Okay, that's everything I wanted to show you today. I'll see you next week for the great root crop harvest. Thanks so much for watching everybody. Happy gardening.